What's going on, guys? Welcome back to WDYD CSP. What do you do as a central sterile processor? All right, guys, I'm going to show you how to do cleaning verification on a GI scope. Okay, after the successful manual cleaning of a flexible endoscope, you want to perform cleaning verification. Amy ST91 gives us guidance stating that. Cleaning verification should be done on all high-risk scopes. Okay? The standard also gives us a list of specific scopes that fall into that category, but you may also have additional scopes that fall into that category based on a risk assessment at your facility. Okay? This specific cleaning test is a protein residual um, uh, clean, uh, soil cleaning test. Um, so um, I'm going to utilize this one here. There are many out in the market. Again, your facility will choose the test that is best suited for your circumstance and your use. Now, my disclaimer, this is my personal scope. It is not a patient ready scope. It cannot be used on a patient is non functioning. OK, I'm also performing this test in the wrong side or the wrong area. Cleaning verification should be done in the decontamination area in an area designed to do the test. OK, what does that mean? That means that the area should be clean. The surface should be wiped down um, and uh, easily accessible um, and easily accommodate for the scope size and the test that's going to be performed. Now, this test is a squeegee type test where it means that I have to pull a squeegee down the channel of choice. So you must use the appropriate size brush and or squeegee. It also requires that you run a control each day that you perform this test um, so that you have something to measure up against. Uh, this one is a nice bright blue color change and when you see the uh, uh, soil it will change to a nice bright blue color. Okay. Also read the IFUs because a lot of these tests require that you uh, use some type of moisture to either uh, uh, dip the brush or squeegee and or flush the channel. Okay. With that being said, guys, after the manual cleaning process, the channels should be blown out with instrument air to remove the residual moisture from the cleaning process. Okay. You do not want to mix the uh, the the water or solution from the test kit with the water or solution from the cleaning process. Okay, why is that? Okay, some of these tests require sterile water to be injected or flushed into the cannula. Okay, are we using sterile water during our rinsing process in the manual cleaning? And these lumens are pretty long, so there's going to be a fair amount of uh, moisture or water left in those channels. So you don't want to mix those two waters because you might get a false positive. Um, so make sure that you definitely, definitely, definitely flush out those cannulas prior to doing any cleaning verification. It's just my opinion and that is my suggestion to get the best possible results and the truest results of your test. Now, this one again requires that the distal and the proximal end of this squeegee be moistened with uh, uh, water prior to pushing through to help ease the friction. Um, and when you're doing that, you wanna make sure you're not hitting any other surfaces um, and use the water stated by the IFU. You want to advance that brush nice and slow until it exits the distal tip. But while you're advancing that squeegee and or brush, you want to feel for any resistance down that ch channel. That resistance may indicate internal damages to that channel. And with that being said, when you're pulling that through, do not force the brush through there because it may exit but if you felt any kind of resistance the squeegee end is a little bit thicker than the insertion end and if you can't if you had trouble pushing the insertion tip 
you may jam up or get caught up on that kink or buckle inside of that channel and now you can't retract or back that squeegee out and now you caused more damage to the scope so do not force it if you feel any resistance once you remove the squeegee and it exit completely again grasp it by the base it's going to be nice and slow um, make sure it doesn't hit any surfaces and then swish it around in the solution um, or cut it off as the IFU may state that you need to do into the testing solution. Okay, this one here gives you a specific time that needs to be uh, that needs to pass in order to get the results. So instead of me standing around waiting, I'm going to go ahead and clean up. Okay, get rid of the one time use squeegee or sponge. Okay dump my water out and again your water should be poured into a secondary con uh, container not the cap that you're going to place back onto the water because why i might have cross contaminated there right i know some of you guys are going to catch that like hey wait a minute what if that was a positive what if there was soil in there you dip that squeegee in there there was water in there you just dumped it and you're putting it back on that water what are you going to do with that water jesse but hey i, I got you guys Okay, that was a bad practice and should not be done. Again, this is for educational purposes only, so I'm educating you some more. All right, that squeegee came through. The test is negative, so I did a good job in cleaning the internal surfaces of my flexible endoscope. Am I done? In my opinion, no. You tested the internal surfaces. Don't we clean the external surfaces of the scope as well? Okay, we use non-linting towels or um, liners or uh, 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 wipes to clean the external surfaces and or sponges to clean the external surfaces of these flexible endoscopes. They get soiled as well from handling. So we should be testing the external surfaces as well. Okay, and this test that I have in my hand is made by the same company and based on the same principle. So I'm going to go ahead and swab the external surfaces of this flexible endoscope. And I'm going to swab in areas that I feel are the most challenging, which is around the control body and those knobs. Okay, as stated, we use non-linting uh, wipes, towels um, and or sponges. So do we truly get in between those knobs really good? And if we're using a, a, a brush to brush those areas, are the bristles long enough to get in between those knobs? Well, I'm doing a large surface here. I'm doing the knobs, I'm doing the body, I'm doing around the biopsy port and inside those uh, suction and water uh, cannulas right there. I'm doing the button, the function button controls. So a nice big area because I don't wanna miss it. I don't wanna do a small little area because I feel that's kind of cheating right there. You want to do a nice surface area, okay? Activate your test, shake it very well to mix it, and then compare it to the color change there. If you cleaned it properly, you will not see any color change, which indicates a negative, which is in fact what's going on here. So I did a great job cleaning the internal and external surfaces of this flexible endoscope. Ready for the next process. All right, guys, as always, continue educating yourself. And until next time, peace.